Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, testing, 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 testing. Well, we just had a, we went to the wrong way, like that. Yeah. Which needs to. I gotta go over here because there's a plug. Just not sure how we're gonna get this. I gotta plug in over here. Session that Tom went back over to Mala, Georgia, immediately, and we had one over 
stars and stripes. And uh, out of this, uh, no one could be more proud than I was, and the parents that were there were of how they represented themselves, the way they spoke about themselves, the teammates, the community, the school. And uh, we're really blessed to have the quality of young men we have in the program. Uh, at this time, I'm going to, uh, what we're going to end up doing is I'm going to turn it over just a second to Grady over our athletic director to represent our administration in our school. And uh, then I'm going to take it back over. And the position coaches are going to take the opportunity to tell a few stories, maybe uh, get a couple of jabs, a last couple of jabs in, or whatever it might be, with, with their position players. And then let those young men come up and talk about their commitment today and why they made that commitment. And uh, the things that swayed them that way, as well as to recognize and thank the people that have made a big difference. I, I know I'm going to say this, and the players feel this way, and they'll probably follow up on this a lot of way. I saw Tracy Jenkins here. I've seen some of the other guys in the youth program. I really want to give a shout out to the North Gwinnett Youth Football Association and what they've done to get these young men here and make this program what it is. And I want everybody to give Tracy. Those coaches, Dan, those guys that I've seen here around the ball. For these young men who uh, achieved their dreams today, it really started at a young age and the positive influences. And uh, I saw Steve Cash, another example. I see Georgia. I see guys that have had a huge impact on these young men's lives. And, and myself and the other coaches in this program. I've just been blessed to be able to follow up on that and build off of that. But once I just cannot say enough about the positive experiences that these young men have had coming up through the ranks. And, and that's what it's all about. If they don't get a chance to play college football, it is what it is. These guys are blessed to have that opportunity. But to experience what they've had through youth ball here and all through high school, really, that, that's, that's, that's a be all and end all in all itself. And, uh, but, it, but it really has to start with a positive experience at that young age. Uh, at this time, I'm going to be ready up and let him uh, represent the school. Great job. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Uh, first of all, thank you to Bob and his staff. I think you should give him a round of applause. And the players in this community are now sitting down with them. I have this opportunity to welcome the media. That makes us, that's the world go around, and, and we appreciate you guys coming out and support us. I just have to be, I want to be really brief because it's about these guys. It's about these, these accomplishments. But I do want to share this with you. Um, I've been here 14 years. I got here in 2000. And I've been the athletic director for about a year and a half. But the, the thing that I've been just most drawn to Swanee is the community. To see these young men grow up, to watch them do GFL, to hear about their, you know, their stories and what they did. I have three daughters that go to this, that are in this cluster. I'm a senior and a junior, and to watch them grow up and become young boys and men has been a joy. To see the community rally around these guys as we made a magical journey down in the Georgia Dome. I don't think that anybody could have were told that, but what an amazing accomplishment that these men did, and what an amazing thing that to live in Swanee. It's just a great place to be. I mean, and you know, people talk about us being one of the top ten places. There's no other place that I want to live in here. And I appreciate the community. I appreciate the coaches. And as the administration, we feel proud every time this team takes the field. And we feel proud every time that you come to the stands. And we just want to say thank you. So from Nathan Mountain all the way down uh, to our teachers, coaches, administrators, we just want to say thanks very much to you for what you mean to our community and what you have meant to these young men. And the last thing I do want to say is this. As these young men sign on the dotted line and they begin to put on new colors, and you see all kinds of new colors in front of you from blue to crimson to all kinds of colors. As a Georgia graduate, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But the reality is this it doesn't matter what colors they put on tonight because, in my mind, they're always a little And they are always welcome back to this home. And to me, this is their home. So go out, guys. I pray that you do the best that you can. Make positive impacts in your community that you're going to. Play hard. Represent us well. But always remember that you are always a North Wind Bull. Thank you, guys. Good afternoon. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
front, I start with the position players. I also want to give a tremendous shout out to our touchdown club. Folks, I see Eric Young over here is obviously a great representative. And, uh, but to me, the touchdown club is not just about the executive director, president, or anything. The touchdown club, like our football program, is about the people. And that goes back to all the parents that are sitting out here that have been members of the Touchdown Club, whether it's season tickets, whether it's uh, whatever the event might be, whatever the sales might be going on, whatever, you know, it's all about the kids. It's all about the program. And so to me, the Touchdown Club is the people. And, but, you know, you got to have certain people to work and help. And I know this, with this event, I want to give uh, a special shout-out. to Kim Jenkins. I want to give a special shout-out to Kim, who is always helping with these kind of things. Please stand up, please. I, I know you don't want to, but Lisa Tolkien has just been a real <laughs> person. Um, I've been an absolute fabulous showman to coach this program. And, and to me, it's a family commitment. And she represents that. And uh, so her son is not signing tonight. It's with all about her with that football. It was all about these young men. She's proud of all of us. Thank you, Lisa. All right. This time I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pull upon Sean Jackson and the Sam here. Sean, I'd like to come up and uh, let you do your thing. So we're gonna start with Sean. Coach Jackson, coaches are inside and work and outside of you. He's doing our own. You're doing a fabulous job. Thank you, guys. Before I get started, uh. Based upon my accent, I want to let you guys know that my mother and father were not brother and sister. <laughs> so we real quick. You know, it's not like tonight to me about dream. You know, my dream as a ball coach when I was growing up was to never be to win a Super Bowl or a state championship or or anything external like that. My dream has always been that uh, I wanted to induct one of my players into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That's always been my dream. If a if a player asks you to speak about him in that manner, that means that you meant more to him than just football. Nate Brown means more to me than football. Ten years ago, to this, it's weird. A decade went by. I sent two players to Missouri. My first two players ever. Uh, Missouri wouldn't like it is now. You know, since then they won a couple of Big 12 North titles, the SEC East title. You know, they've been in the top 25 bowl games, all that good stuff. Back then it was a hard sell. Not so much uh, anymore. I think this year they finished fifth. Well, 10 years ago you couldn't hardly get anybody to go there. And since then, Coach Pink was built, his dream was to build a national program. And in the 10 years, he's done that. The reason I bring that up is this. Over the last 10 years, this is the first time in my career that I've ever recommended anybody to the University of Missouri. And all these kids at this table, every one I recommended to the U of M. That is a testament to me, to the parents, to North Gwinnett, and to Coach Fire and the culture he here in the North. You know, in my opinion, there's not a better high school coach in America than Bob. And these kids here are fortunate to play for a man like that and go to a school like North Burnett. <laughs> I also believe this, that the University of Missouri is blessed to get Nate Brown and a kid like Bobby Young to be able to go there. You know, when you do these ceremonies, it always drives me crazy because everybody wants to be enamored with stats. All these busy guys and everything, they want to hear stats, stats, stats. You know, Nate Brown led 6A in touchdown catches. He was all state, all region. You know, Caleb Scott led the team in catches, broke all these records. I want to tell you the stats that you don't know tonight about Nate Brown and our kids. If I could go pick anybody anywhere in the United States, I wouldn't pick anybody over our kids apart from that. I wouldn't trade Nate Brown for anybody that I've ever coached or I ever will coach. You know, it often people say, well, 
What about comparing Nate to Caleb? I couldn't. I can't. You know, it, it drives me crazy when people ask me that. You know, the thing that I'll tell you is this, is they're both great in their own way, and they've both done great things for North Gwinnett. You know, the players set the standard high at school, especially at North. Nate has put the sauce way up there here at this school. I'm about to give Nate the best compliment that a coach can give a player, a family, or a team. Nate Brown is a winner. He always has been and he always will be. These kids in North are winners. In the beginning tonight, I told you that 10 years ago, I sent two kids to Missouri. One was uh, William Moore, and another one was Jimmy Jackson. William Moore is a, uh, was an All-American at Missouri, you know, all-conference player. He starts at Atlanta Falcons at free safety, and he's a pro bowler. Uh, the other one was Jimmy Jackson. He was a running back. Started there three years on and off. Uh, Big 12 player of the week. Had a great career. He graduated went on to be a ball coach. Uh, Jimmy was a coach's dream, man. He had the heart the size of this gym. And uh, he had great character. And he worked as hard as anybody you'd ever want to be around. William, on the other hand, was as determined as any person that you'd ever be around. And he was as athletic as you'd ever come across. And as a coach, you look back on your career, and I've always kept a journal. And I wrote this journal on February 11th of 2004. God, I know I'm just getting started in this game, but I only can dream that I will ever get a coach, a player, that is the best of both Will and Jimmy. This year, Nate made my dream come true. <coughs> Nate, you're the best of both those two, and I'm very thankful to be at North Gwinnett, and we're thankful for you to be a Bulldog. Thanks a lot, Nate. Right now, guys, I'm going to take a moment. 
want to first uh, congratulate Caleb Scott for today signing with the uh, Vanderbilt University. It's very accomplished, and I'd like everybody to get on. Um, if you guys don't know me very well, I'm, I've just been here for a year, but I did graduate from North Gwinnett, and uh, you know, when I took this job a year ago, Bob said I'd be working with some great kids, but I had no idea what type of kids, and quite frankly, Taylor was one of the best I've ever seen. Um, I've never had, I've never had the opportunity to get because a guy like uh, Taylor. He's a guy, he set an example for everybody, through his faith, through his, his love for his family and friends, all right, through his hard work and his dedication. He's one that we can all all our lives after. He's a guy that, like Coach Jackson said, in our receiver room, stats were never brought up. It was never made never made a difference to anybody as long as he won. I was the one Caleb led by that. He was one of the leaders in the room, not only in the room, but in, in, in the classroom and on the team. Caleb, good luck to you. I'm going to keep it short and sweet with you. Remember anything I've ever said to you? Remember this. May the wind always be at your back and sun upon your face. And may the wings of destiny carry you aloft to the dance of the stars. Congratulations. Thank you guys for coming. Um, I'll start by saying uh, just how blessed I am to be up here and how thankful I am. Uh, God bless me with the serenity to play at most of that. Play football. Um, it also lets me as the great opportunity to continue uh, my career with football at the Middle University and my academics. I want to start by thanking the people who got me here, um, my family, I'll just stand up, <laughs> all of them.
<laughs> also, uh, Coach Pickle was a Kent State alum. Um, myself, I'm a Kent State alum, so Coach and I, too. Um, guys from Kent State. You know, there's other two guys out there that I know of, and they say that they're hopes, so it's pretty good favor. Um, we talked a little bit about football. You know, Coach Jackson and um, Coach Umber talked about how stats really aren't the driving force, they're not. But it is a lot of production on defense, and um, we do judge our guys on stats. Uh, Bobby has all the stats that anybody in the next level are going to have. Um, the first thing that really stands out to me statistically is he's a three-year starter. Now, you, you look at most teams that have a four-year span, he would be lucky to play 30 games. Bobby played 40. He's a three-year starter. You know, we set the bar high, and we, we don't have a 10-game season. So going into college football, he's very seasoned, he's very experienced. Just the stats from this year, he had 101 tackles, 65 solo, 34 assists, uh, forced three fumble recoveries, uh, two cost fumbles, two interceptions, six PBUs. He won a big stick award against Stevenson. He was winning that daily post on roll against North Cross, Collins Hill. He won a touchdown club um, honoree in September. Won that county first team defense back. Reached the seventh first team defense back. So you kind of see the caliber of athlete that the service gave him. Um, and this all comes through his hard work. But tonight is about football, as we say, they're going to sign, they're going to make stats, they're going to do special things for the rest of their life. You know, the great thing about being a coach is, is we get to get to know them as a young man. And I want to talk a little bit about it. Um, first, he comes from one of the best families I've met, from Eric, Darcy, Brandon, and Macy. Um, what a special family to be part of. And you can just see it in him, he has a little bit of um, there's so many things that you can describe, and I kind of limited myself to one letter of the alphabet. And if you get to know Bob and you see the many things he can do, you realize there's, there's so many words you can describe. It's kind of different all the time. But I chose the letter H just so we can save time and I'm not up here talking about it. Uh, the first kind of goes along with this football is hostility. You know, I remember the first practice he played rubber and golf for me. We lined up the ADD drills. And I think he was going to toss the Kim, knock Kim down, and, you know, kind of rubbed him up a little bit. And um, Kim kind of hold that against him for the rest of his life. So, you know, it, everything that he does, his method of play on the football field is so hostile. Um, from drill work to the game field, the intense energy he has. Seven on seven, there wasn't a wide receiver that wanted to line up across the ball because he knew Bob was probably going to hold him. He was going to beat him up a little bit and get him on the ball fresh. And I just love that about him. Um, next argument, whether it's in the classroom, the weight room, seven on seven, the football fundraising, um, he's one of the hardest workers on the team. Anything that he was in charge of is going to be done, it's going to be done first class. Sometimes maybe at the last minute, but it's going to be done, it's going to be done very well. Uh, next is honor. Um, he's deserving of the athletes that he gets. He's a model for other student athletes to follow. He's a model for all future Bulldogs to follow. He, if I had a son, I would want to be like Bob. You know, and with, with some nexus, it's so humble. You know, I was talking to Darcy today about his signing and how he didn't really want to get up in front of people. He was like, you know what, I've waited my whole life for this, it's time to do it. He is so humble, he never wants to spot it. Bobby's the type of kid that would rather um, celebrate with his peers and be the center of attention. He don't want to be focused on himself, but he deserves all the focus that he gets. And the last humility. You know, I noticed this the other day, I was walking through the cafeteria. Here's a kid in two days who was signed and commit to an SEC college. Now, if that would have been this number 12 in high school, my chest would have been out, and I'd try to have at least a harem of people around me. But Bobby's walking by himself with an apple, close with two Doritos, and something else on his plate, with an ear to ear grin, and just smiling and happy to be a student, happy to be a school. You know, and I thought that was so special in who he is. You know, he has no attitude, no more about it. You know, he's friends with everybody. Um, see it from a Halloween party at his home to a school function. He mixes with it with everybody. He's the perfect, and he's the epitome of what a high school student should be. Um, and moving forward, you know, Missouri is getting a great young man, a great student athlete, a great family. And to be honest with you, you can't lose. And that's what I'm not.
be an NFL walk one day. And that is an exciting, exciting thing for us to look at as local net bulldogs. And I'm proud of him and I'm excited to watch where he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Casey. Classroom bit, okay, 
You want to be sitting, for example, your talents can only get you so far. That academic standpoint, standpoint gets you to that next level and puts you in a position to be at a place like Georgia Tech. And, and the thing is, at Georgia Tech, he's going to play football. But he's making a life commitment, a life choice that's going to sustain him for the next 40 years of life. Graduating from Georgia Tech and the degree that he will come to Georgia Tech it would give him a platform for life. Okay, now we talk a lot about kids going to football, going to school for football, and they get and they get the accolades now. But football only lasts for so long. Football only lasts for so long. You guys are fortunate that you got four more years for football at the college, maybe five if you're a shirt, okay? But at some point, you have got to start your life. And you guys have that opportunity right now. CJ's going to Georgia Tech, the rest of these guys are going to different places to start that new chapter in their life. And that's what the true blessing is with these guys making these gifts today. Um, CJ, <laughs> Hey, you you made made my year fun. Okay, all uh, those the the talks we had right before the game. Uh, I remember the last one, the pressure's on. Okay, and I put the ball right there. Hey, I saw the guy. I saw the burning, the burning, the passion you had for the game, and that made coaching football fun. You made coaching football fun, and I appreciate you for that. CJ, look at me. He's a great coach. I love him. I, like I said, I like to thank for his fire, the rest of the coaching staff, his dad, and his fraction, his rise, and um, everyone on the coaching staff. Now I can thank my parents, my mom, my dad, for loving for over the years. You guys can stand. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to And also, I like to thank my teammates, the young boys over there. And um, I like to thank the community for being behind me. Um, it's a great play in North Connect. I will trade this season for the world. It was just great coming out every Friday night and staying full, kids sharing. It's, it was amazing. I will trade for them. Uh, we're going to stay in Atlanta. We're going to bring Coach Rice up. Talk about Ron Wayne. special relationship like I do with each and every one of the players on the team. I love each and every one of my kids, but I love them differently. And Brian is a lot like me in a lot of ways. When I got here for my first year last year, I saw something in me when he was a running back that was special. And I went to Coach Fire and I asked about him. I said, who is that kid right there? He's going to be all right. Lord works his magic. Because Brian has something on his heart. He came to me and he said, Coach Rice, I think I can play for him. I said, Well, son, you have all the tools. You're great. I wouldn't mind having him. So, a couple of trades and a couple, you know, Peter Wood and Jelly Sandwiches later, Coach Bob gave him up. He's mine. And he worked so hard. 
to be where he is today. And the reason why he's so special to me is because he said the same thing to me that I said to my mom. He said, this day 10 years ago when I signed my letter for 10 for the college football. He said, Coach Ryder, I want to go to school and I want to save my mom some money. And that has been his goal from day one. And I've written him and every coach here to tell you, I've written this kid as hard as you can ride any kid there is because he has the potential to be so great. He is a natural born leader. He's done everything I've asked him on and off the field. And I say I'm just proud of him and everything he's achieved thus far because you have achieved your first goals. You told me that you the scholarship and you were the guy. You wrote the book. I just helped you in some spots. This is all on the I'm proud of you. Your parents have done a great job. With you. been a great teammate. You take me to a place as a coach that I've never been. I've never been past the second round of playoffs as a coach ever. Ever. As a player or a coach. You see, I got as close to one to the championship, and this guy was going to catalyst my safety. And I respect him because he responds. And I always tell him, don't be afraid to be great. Don't be afraid to be great. And he's not afraid to be great. He's taking the reins. He's having me play his best football game. Brian Williams is a household name, and he will be one in four years because y'all be somebody's football player or be working for somebody's big time company. I'm proud of everything that you've done this week, son. You can tell you you're going to be great. That's what we make. Great. Brian Williams. Man. Shout out to Coach Rice. Um, he, he made this season, you know, really interesting for me. Uh, you know, being on top of me about everything I do, as far as football, schoolwork, taking care of the house. Um, some of the younger guys can't vouch for me. You know, you couldn't come to practice and just use Tyler wrong. You know, Buzz Wilson, get ready for the meltdowns. So uh, I just want to give a shout out to you know the entire coaching staff as a whole for you know helping me grow as a football player and as a man. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to our student session, student section, and, and uh, the administration department over that that you know has helped us and everything you know we need this whole season. I want to give a big shout out to my mother sitting down here in the front. <laughs> You know, go for free. Um, some of you might not know, but being a single black mother, you know, in America is not the easiest thing in the world. So I felt like, you know, I could just use my God given talents as far as football and my smarts, you know, help her out as much as I could. And she just does so much for me, you know, day in and day out. Um, I want to give another shout out to the fellow signees and the fellow uh, North Carolina teammates. Um, just making this season just so great. Uh, one for one. You know, that we had, you know, starting in the dome, and then, you know, that's what we said the entire season, and, you know, you young guys help us do that, you know, as a senior class, so I just want to say good luck to the rest of you guys, so good luck to all the signees, wherever you guys go, and um, good luck. I switch gears back to golf exercise, and, uh, to the unsung hero kind of position to bring uh, Coach Bryce up and talk about Gino and his office behind the line. <laughs> Gino's a brainiac of the group, too, so God bless you. <laughs> Um, beginning of the year, Gino was actually on the defensive side of the ball, um, and we had been talking. Said, "Well, 
bring over to the offense and see if he can give us some depth. I said, you know, maybe he come in and maybe play a little tackle. Maybe if we get the pinch, we'll see how the year goes. And uh, I remember we were in the mat room, and he wouldn't come up and get in the drills in the beginning because he didn't quite know what he was doing. And then sometimes he'd get the footwork wrong, and then he be too strong and then one of the young guys would get thrown into one of the walls in the wrestling room and then you know, sometimes tears would happen but eventually he started to catch on. And the reason that he caught on so quick like Coach Meyer said, Gio is an excellent student. This is 3.9 um, and he's one of the most technical players I've ever coached. Gio wants to know every step. He wants to know why he has to take that step. He wants to know why he has to put his hand in a certain place. He wants to know why he has to position his body a certain way. Every single thing about how to block the person in front of him and why he's got to take that guy to that guy. What's the best possible way to get from point A to point B? And how many steps exactly will that take? It's, it's amazing how, much, how many questions he would ask in such a short amount of time um, to figure out how to block a guy standing right next in front of him. <laughs> but it's something that <laughs> he rose to the occasion bigger than I ever thought that he would. Something that um, I love coaching offensive line because the expectation sometimes is just for us to get in the way or or to or to just make sure a guy doesn't make a tackle. And the mentality of these young men that I've had. I'm over these past couple of years, all over my second year here, is they're wild. And he was the epitome of that whenever he was healthy. He had, he had a couple of games where he got hurt, but they are a violent crew. We're not always going to be the biggest, but they're, they're going to fight hard, and they're going to block hard, and they're going to play hard, because that's the expectation. And that's the love that they have for each other. And this group of seniors, that are leaving this year that were offensive linemen. I'm so, so proud of them because they filled some really big shoes. And honestly, I thought they did a better job than anyone would have ever given them credit for. And Gino was a huge part of that. Um, he came in, and the rest of those guys, these are the offensive line that I had this year, are true program guys. They were all together when they were this big, and, and you can see that love they had for each other, even in practice the jokes and the clowning and all the rest of that mess. Um, and they brought him into the fold, and, and it was great that he played usually next to Scruggs because Scruggs knows everything we do, whether it's offensive line or running back or receiver or quarterback or any other spot. So it was great to have him next to Scruggs because Scruggs would say, no, we, we're going to take him this way. Great for him and he know exactly how to do it. Um, <laughs> As he developed, he not only was a, a good offensive lineman, he became a dominant. Um, and I'm very, very proud of him. And everything that he did on the field, he's a much better young man off the field. He's involved in every student leadership, every, you name it, he's involved in it. Um, and, and, and that's what makes me even more proud. Uh, right now, he's coming out of a track with us, and we were ready to leave the field after shopping this. And, I don't know how long he stayed up there after I left because I was tired and I was ready to go home. My kids were back back there, were home up. I'm ready to go. But until he gets it right, he won't leave. So when he goes to Yale, they're getting someone who is a special, not just a special player, but a special young man. And he will work as hard as that coach needs him to work, not only to be good, but to be great. But there are great, great things in his future. And I'm very proud of him, even though you were a riser. Hey guys, uh, first and foremost, uh, all the glory of this year to God. You know, I'm just so blessed to be part of this program. Uh, blessed to play football for about four more years. Uh, also, I'd like to give thanks to uh, my family and uh, they're always there for me. Uh, I'd like you to stand up. Uh, coaches, 
you know, they're always there to you know, come to the way. You know, sometimes they're, you seem like they're yelling at you for no reason, but it's always for you. And uh, the team, you know, so many bad memories we made with them that you'll never forget. You know, a lot of times, when you're in the season, you don't see anyone else besides the football team. You know, it gets a little stressful, but they become your brothers, and it's truly a family. And uh, that's one of the reasons that I also uh, chose Yale, you know, because they're, it really feels like a family. It's family mentality. Uh, their residential college system makes you into this like, college, and uh, the coach is really, really welcoming. Uh, it's part of a great tradition. They've won many national championships, uh, not in my lifetime, but in his lifetime, or well, not the grandparents' lifetime. But uh, <laughs> it's a place of great tradition. And, uh, that's why I like to take my thoughts to uh, Roll Dogs.
He was going to lead this defense. He was going to be a leader on this football team. And this football team was going to be successful. And he painted that picture. And no matter what setback or whatever got in our position, in the way, he wasn't going to allow it. And tell you, I'm extremely proud of him for that. A couple of stats on Tony. Tony is six feet tall. His weight fluctuates. <laughs> Tony is the most versatile linebacker I've ever coached. We, we moved him from the Mike linebacker in the middle of times to the, the bug, the strong linebacker that would be spread out, covering up against receivers. We walked him up on tight ends. We walked him down on offensive tackles. We had him run to the deep middle at times. He did a little bit of everything on our defense. And Tony may not be the tallest or the heaviest or the strongest or the fastest, but what he would do is he would study. And Tony would come up and be, hey, coach, did you see number 22? When he stands out one foot wider, they're running this ball. Or, coach, when the tight end has this foot, they're only going to do A or B. And Tony was like an extended coach. And that was fun. It made my job a lot easier. Tony, he's going to be very successful. He's going to be successful as a player in Eastern Illinois. He's going to be successful in life as a husband and as a father. He's going to be successful in whatever business venture he chooses to do because he can repaint that picture. And he does care about people, care about the people around him. One of the things that, that happened throughout the year, it's about midway through the year, I, I would go back and study old film from the previous years, and I kept watching Tony play as a junior, and, and some of them were pretty amazing. And, and he would make a few great plays at the beginning of the year, but, but they weren't coming in the, the lows that I thought Tony was capable of having them come in. And one day at practice, I got on to him pretty good, and, and he took the tight end, the fullback, and the running back, and with one punch, shoved them all down. And it was amazing. It was great. And, and all I could think of was his name, Tony. And all I could think of was you know, the, the uh, Frosted Place commercial. The big old tiger saying, they're great. And so I kind of came up with a little nickname myself for him, it was Tony the Tiger. And what I'm excited about is Tony's going to be staying in the feline family. Because <laughs> he's now going to be a panther. Tony, thank you very
No, I'm going to lie. It's going to be hard. <laughs> Tell myself when we cry. It's not real much. I'm blessed, obviously, a lot of ways. I have a whole lot of sons every year. I consider my sons. This is my first experience of sending one out from our program, leaving our program. And I feel great about the experiences he had, has had, just like the other sons, all the guys that play here, and the experience they've had. Uh, I say you for last because my coaches tell me all the time, I treat them last. And so I just want to stay with that thing. We can be last. So, but I know this, uh, I know I speak for him and saying as a coach here, uh, well, I'll let him talk about his mom, talk about his sister, all that kind of stuff, I know, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I came home the other day, and my wife said, well, you, won't, you won't believe what happened. I was at the store the other day. Of course, she spent the last eight years coming out of the store as Coach Byers' wife. She comes home the other day and she said, well, I'm checking out the store. And the lady saw my license, my paper, credit card. She said, oh, you're the quarterback's mom. <laughs> okay, that's really, really cool. <laughs> Instead of being the coach's wife, it turned in the other direction now. She's the quarterback's mom. You know, I think uh, being the coach's son it, it has some curses to it. Uh, the, 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 the people who want to say that uh, uh, the, the coach's son doesn't get what he, he, he didn't earn it, uh, he didn't work to get it, uh, it was handed to him. Uh, all those kind of naysayers that want to, want to be around, that kind of negativity. All of this, my life I flashed in front of my eyes, Collins Hill, for the first series of the second quarter. He's having an unbelievable game. He's already 8 for 10, 177 yards passing, two touchdowns, and he's crumpled on the ground. And we're on the headphones, and as coaches, we're all kind of in agreement. The, the, we're all staying calm, but the general consensus, the communication on the headphones was uh, guys probably uh, a couple of plates and about 20 screws because that leg's probably broken, or that knee's probably gone. And uh, my body kind of flashed. So, Coach Jackson and I were the first ones out there. Here comes Doug, here comes the doctor. And I hear, hear him look, lean up and go to Coach Jackson, and he goes, Did you catch it? <laughs> I went, Well, that's a pretty good sign. And then he's, you know, but then he's kind of like, My knee, my knee, my knee. And then he's like, Oh, got my leg. Well, fortunately, the ankle game, you know, the long story short, he just missed a couple of games with back. But I think uh, I think that was really the fighting moment for our team. That was the time that, that uh, Frank was talking about. CJ really kind of taking over after the game, emotionally and verbally, and uh, as well as the rest of the team. They even committed that much more. But you know, the quarterback I've said it many, many times is measured by the success of the team, not just by stats, not just by what I know is. Been here eight years, we've been very, very blessed. We've had two quarterbacks that have taken us to the final. Michael Tamburo and Hayden Spire. And that's really how you measure the success of a quarterback. It's how they beat the team and the success of the team. There have been a lot of accolades just yesterday. I got a call uh, from the GACA and uh, they had their meeting and he was selected as an All-State quarterback. He was a quarterback of the year in Gwinnett County. He was the First team all region quarterback. He threw some 34 touchdowns, over 2,600 yards, and on and on and on. But I say this as his position coach, not just his dad. What he did for this football team was incredible. <coughs> the leadership he showed, what he took was his experiences to the field, and he got the ball distributed and got it to him in a way that made us successful. He developed. developed a unit that trusted each other, that believed in each other, that drove each other. It was a competitive yet successful unified effort. And that only happens when your quarterback is getting everybody on the page. So as a position coach, I say,
kudos to the year that you had, the career that you had at North Winnet. As a dad, I love you and I'm proud of you. Um, first off, I want to thank God for giving me the ability to play football. Secondly, I want to thank my family, of course, my dad, my coach, my mom, and sister to stand up to me. Happy to be uh, introducing a new one into the family in about a month. Um, I'm just going to scan this. We've got a lot of people today. I want to thank all the coaches, especially Coach Braxton. Um, Molding the best O line in the state together has had me all year. Um, let's see, uh, Coach Basilio, uh, my eighth grade BFL coach, uh, kind of started all this, getting us all together. I want to thank you for that. Um, I want to thank my young life leaders, uh, Chris Warren and Brad Appleby. They're kind of they're people that I can always talk to about anything, no matter what's going on in my life, and they're not going to judge me for what I say. Um, I want to thank Coach Hobbs all the way in the back. He was a uh, senior coach here. He was a coach here my freshman and sophomore year, and he kind of laid a foundation in Caleb and Nate, and I clearly uh, led them to have big, big careers at North Um I want to thank the student section for always being there at every game, no matter where it was. You know, uh, Bailey Robson. Um, I want to thank John Arzua, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> he honestly saved this season for us. Um, I got injured the call until week, and two weeks later, we were playing PC Ridge on senior night. And I had it, it, it was in my mind that I was going to play that night, no matter what. I warmed up throughout the game. I thought I was going to play, my dad thought I was going to play, the whole coach staff thought I was going to play. And right before we're walking out on the field, I told my dad, um, I think it's better if John plays this game. You know, I don't think I'm, I'm able to have the same effect yet. And he kind of looked at me and he's like, are you sure? I said, yes, sir. And then John went out. I think he led us to the biggest one over piece of we've ever had here. The running clock in the fourth quarter. I don't think that's been done. Um, I want to thank all my teammates, senior to freshman. Um, we really couldn't have done it without any single one of you guys. The work you guys put in all year was incredible. I want to thank you guys for that. Um, there's nine signees up here, but there could easily be six or seven more that are choosing education over football. And I want to thank them for all they did. Um, one last person, Cody Butcher. <laughs> um, he was kind of the heart and soul of this team. He got injured in the preseason game against Stevenson, and the whole, all, as a senior group, we kind of made this vow that we're going to get the state for Cody. You know, we want him to at least play one more game. So we go out to state, and he, he's dressed out. He's he's pumped. He wants to play so bad, and I want to apologize for not let getting him to play. But um, I guess I mean we got we get, we got to where we wanted to be. We just didn't finish. But um, it was the most fun I've ever had playing football. And I just want to thank the community and uh, everyone for coming out to support us this, this year. Well, we didn't know what you're doing with Chris Nate. Uh, Chris Hatton was the head coach there. He's a long time Georgia guy. Chris's dad was a long time high school football coach in Georgia. Chris was a uh, Chris was a head coach at Valdosta State. He coached a quarterback by the name of Dustin Bomber, who was a player of the year two years in a row in Division II football at Valdosta State. And I had a chance to coach Dusty when I was coaching the indoor arena team in Lexington, and we won a championship. Dusty, when I was coaching that team, so Chris came down and watched us practice early in the playoffs when he was evaluating how to determine whether they were going to offer a scholarship or not. So he watched his practice. He walked over to me after practice. The first thing he said was, man, he reminds me a lot of Dusty. And that was the greatest compliment he ever had. Dusty was a great competitor and obviously an extremely successful quarterback. 
and uh, that was a great comment. So we say that he's going to play at Murray State, and he'll be playing against Tony at Eastern Illinois. So don't, don't you be hit, my boy. <laughs> Now we're going to we're going to divert a little bit. This is a little bit different tonight, and I appreciate the media that's here tonight bearing with us. This ceremony was very, very uh, right thing to do for these guys and what they've done for the program. But before they do their their signing of autographs, etc., we've got a very special young man in our program, in Mitch Hyatt. Mitch is really just another outstanding example of what this community produces in terms of character, work ethic, commitment to team, commitment to each other, commitment to being excellent in everything they choose to do. I'm very blessed to have the opportunity to coach Mitch. I've been in this game a long time. I've had some great, great players. You know, Coach Jackson was talking about William Moore and his career as a pro bowler in the NFL, and no one ever knows how any of this is going to play out. And I'm not going to stand up here and make those kind of predictions because to me, that's not what a high school football coach does. A high school football coach should be about high school football. It's about team, it's about community, it's about these young men growing up and learning to challenge themselves to the max in so many ways and to learn to live in this community and in a bigger global society to give back. And to me, Mitch is more about giving back to this football team than he is about himself. And that's probably one of the reasons. Yeah, I'll let him tell why he's making the decisions he's making now, but I know in my heart what it's all about. And so uh, Mitch is ready to make his decision. We're blessed that he is recognized as one of the premier recruit in the nation. Some rating services have him as the number one recruit in Georgia. Some even have, have suggested he's the number one recruit in the nation. I don't know how you decide those things. I just know he's great for North Gwinnett and he's great for North Gwinnett football. And that's all I really care about right now. Mitch Hyatt. He's gone. He's been well ahead of the curve in terms of visiting schools over the last year, going to games, going to junior days last year at Fall Four, 
because everybody was really ahead of the curve on their recruiting of him. He's had ample time ahead of folks to do a lot of evaluation. So, you know, obviously from a personal standpoint, Mitch has already spoken for himself, but he's very comfortable with his decision. But it's very comforting to know, really, the number one motivation is his commitment to his teammates, where he and his team can focus on <coughs> next fall, North Gwinnett season, not Clemson's. That'll come two years from now. It's all about North Gwinnett, right, guys? <laughs> Uh, at this time, I know it's been long, but, but my gosh, we can go on and on about these guys. I would like to uh, let the community.